In this video, we're going to learn about static member functions in C++. Static member functions allow us to work with and manipulate static member variables, otherwise known as class variables. So let's go over an example. We'll make a class called square for representing squares. And our square class is going to have a private instance variable side length for the side length of the square. We'll make a constructor to set this. We'll say square int length. And we'll use this length argument to the constructor to set side length. And we'll also make an area function. So we'll say int area. And this function will return side length times side length to compute the area of the square. And then we'll make a square object instance where the square object has a side length of five and we'll output the area of that square. So we'll say square one area colon output square one dot area and we'll end line and we'll get a square area of 25 in that case because five times five is 25. So, so far this is a pretty regular class. What we'd like to see though is how a static member function works. So for that, we're gonna first need a static member variable. So here we'll say, static int total squares. So this here is a static member variable, which is a variable for the class. That's why it's sometimes called a class variable. There's going to be one total squares variable for all the objects of this class to share. And the variable is really associated with the class. So the static keyword does that. Now we can initialize this variable down here by saying int square colon colon total squares is equal to zero. And we're going to use this static member variable to keep track of how many square objects actually exist. So in our constructor here, whenever we make a new square object, we're going to increment total squares by one. Now, right now, because this is a private static member variable, we can't actually access this variable outside the class. So in the main function here, I couldn't say something like C out total squares and then try to output square colon colon total squares. We can initialize it outside the class, but that's it. This here won't work. If I try to run this, we'll get an error that we're trying to access a private member. So what we're going to have to do in this case is create a static member function that will allow us to access and return this value. So here we'll say static int get total. So the static keyword means this is a static member function, which means this function is really associated with the class and not any particular object instance, just like a static member variable. And what this function will do is just return total squares. So we can call this get total function in a similar manner to how we access the static member variables of a class. We could say here, C out total squares colon, and we'll output square colon colon get total. So this will call the static member function that in the same way a static member variable is truly associated with the class is also truly associated with the class square. And if we save and run this, we should get total squares of one. And we do. If we did make another square, we'll say square, square one, 10. And now we have two square object instances. We could output the square two area. So we'll say square two area colon and output square two area and end line. And we could also output the total squares again. And now we'll find that the get total function is going to return two because we have two squares. Oops, and I'll just fix this here and say square two. So I'll save and run this. And get total does return two because there are two square objects now. So that's what a static member function looks like. Now we can also have a private static member function. So for example, we can make a function to actually carry out the incrementing of total squares. We could say static void 
increment total. And this function will just take total squares and increment it by one. And we could call this function here. We could say increment total, open bracket, close bracket. And here we'd be using a private static member function. And if we save and run this, it'll still work the same way. Now, because it's a private static member function, we can't use it outside the class definition. So for example, I can't say something like square colon colon and then increment total. If we try to run this, we'll get an error saying increment total is a private member. Now, one thing I should mention is right here where I say square colon colon get total, I could actually say square two dot get total. And if I save and run this, this will actually work okay. So we actually can access the static member functions of a class by using the object instances. But as a best practice, we should do it this way with the class name colon colon method. Now, one thing with our static member functions is they can't access the instance member variables. So for example, I couldn't say here side length plus plus inside get total. If I try to run this, we'll get an error. It says invalid use of member side length in static member function. And if you think about it, it doesn't really make any sense because this get total function, as with every static member function, is really associated with the class. So we can't access an instance variable, which is associated with a specific object instance. The other thing we can't do inside a static member function is use the this keyword. So for example, in this member function here, I could say C out side length, and we'll say this arrow side length, and then end line. So the this keyword is a pointer to the object instance for which this member function is currently running. And we can use it to access member variables and other things of that object instance. Now, we can't do this inside a static member function. So if I try to copy and paste this in here and save and run this, we'll get a similar error here where it's gonna say, invalid use of this outside of a non-static member function. So again, the issue is we have a static member function here and we're doing something that really depends on having a particular object instance. But again, the get total function is really associated with the class and not a specific object instance for which it could access instance variables. So this is the basics of static member functions in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.